Here's another translation rule for conditionals that doesn't use if or then. This one is useful for interpreting disjunctions as conditionals, or rewriting conditionals in the form of a disjunction. It turns out that you can write any conditional claim as a disjunction, a claim of a form A or B. Let's use if I live in Paris, then I live in France again. There are only three possibilities for how the disjunction should be phrased. A or B, A or not B, or not A or B. From the title of this tutorial, you already know the answer to this question. But for the sake of demonstrating why the answer is correct, let's work through these. If the original conditional is true, then is this disjunction also true? Either I live in Paris or I live in France? No, this doesn't have to be true. The original conditional is consistent with me living in New York, say. There's no reason why I have to live in Paris or France. So this won't work. Let's try the next one. If the original conditional is true, does it follow that either I live in Paris or I don't live in France? Well, that would be an odd inference, wouldn't it? This entails that Paris is the only city in France that I'm allowed to live in. This doesn't follow, so we'll strike that one out. Now, if the original conditional is true, does it imply that either I don't live in Paris or I live in France? It does, but let's see why. Recall that what the or means is that one or the other of these must be true. They can't both be false. It's easy to see that they can't both be false. If they were both false, then I'd be saying, I live in Paris and I don't live in France. But that's impossible since Paris is in France. So both of these disjuncts can't be false at the same time. One of them must be true. Now let's assume that the first disjunct is false. I do live in Paris. Does it follow that I live in France? Yes, it does, since Paris is in France. Now assume that the second disjunct is false. I don't live in France. Does it follow that I don't live in Paris? Yes, it does, for the same reason. This is indeed the correct translation. If you're not convinced, then you can show that these are logically equivalent with truth tables too. On the left is all the possible truth values of A and B. In the middle is the truth table for the disjunction, when you negate A. On the right is the truth table for the conditional. You can see that the truth values for the disjunction and the conditional, highlighted in red, match up. Some people find these kinds of explanations helpful, some don't. Either way, the general rule is easy to remember. If A then B can always be rewritten as not A or B. It's helpful to have the brackets around not A so that you don't confuse this expression with the contradictory of a disjunction, not A or B. Brackets in logic function like they do in math. They clarify the order of operations when it might otherwise be unclear. Let's look at a few examples. Our claim is, if we win the game, then we'll win the championship. As a disjunction, you're going to write this as not A or B. The A is antecedent, which is, we win the game. So negate that and put that as the first disjunct. Now we finish by writing OR and putting in the consequent for the second disjunct, like so. We won't win the game, or we'll win the championship. I admit that these translations don't always sound very natural. But if you think about the semantics for disjunctions and work through the reasoning, you'll see that they get the logic right. And sometimes you can express them in a more natural way, like this. If you assume that ties have to be broken in the championship game, then you can switch lost for won't win and write it as either we lost the game or we won the championship. Now this sounds a lot more natural. Regardless, you won't go wrong if you trust the translation rule. Here's one more example. If there's no gas in the car, then the car won't run. As a disjunction, the translation looks like this. Either there's gas in the car, or the car won't run. And this one sounds pretty natural as it is. This translation rule can be especially handy for working through certain kinds of LSAT logic games, where you have to represent conditional rules on a diagram. Sometimes it's easier to do this when the rule is expressed as an either-or proposition.